Okay, so this is your second video for your review of factoring, and what we're going to be looking at now is step three, which we call chart factoring. And for chart factoring, um, there are actually going to be two different types, and one of the types I'm going to give you two different options for how your Algebra 1 teacher might have taught it to you. Um, and as with many things where there's more than one way to do something, I do not care which way you do it, as long as you show your work and as long as you're getting the right answer. So remember, this is an order of operations. So no matter what, you always have to check for GCF first, then check to see if it's a special product. Step three, chart factoring, is only if you've already done step one and two. So when we are chart factoring, we have these two situations right here. Either the quadratic is the form x squared plus bx plus c, meaning it's a plain x squared, or it's an ax squared, meaning that there's another number in the front. So if it is the first type where it's a plain x squared plus bx plus c, then what I mean by chart factoring is we make this lovely little chart that says what multiplies to give me the constant, which would be C in this case, and adds to give me the middle coefficient, which would be B. So of course, when we're actually doing this, we write out the numbers, we don't actually write C and B. So once you have done that, you will look at all the factors that you list and you'll circle the ones that actually do add to what you wanted them to. Once you've done that, those factors get filled into the back. The front gets filled in with x and x because it's always the square root of the front term on an x squared one when it's plain x squared. So this is always just x. So example five, again, first we would check for a GCF. In this case, there isn't one. We don't have any number or variable in common between all three. I know that it's not a special product in less than five seconds because it's a trinomial, but the third term isn't positive. So again, you shouldn't be spending long on going through the checklist in your mind. It should be very simple as to whether it's a special product or not. So that means because it's a plain x squared that we're going to be looking for numbers that multiply to negative 66, because that's my constant, and add to negative 5. Now, there are multiple numbers that multiply to negative 66. So what I suggest you do is just start writing down the ones that you think of. So maybe the first thing that you think of is negative 22 with positive 3. Those multiply to negative 66. When I add them, however, I get negative 19. Because this number is way bigger than what I had, that means I need numbers that are closer together here. So maybe you look at this and the next thing you think of is 11 and negative 6. 11 times negative 6 is negative 66. When I add these, I get 5. Now be careful. They were supposed to add to negative 5, which is not what I have here. But once I get the right number with the wrong sign, it just means I need to switch the signs. So negative 11 and positive 6 do add to negative 5. So I circle these because these are my winners, which means these factors that I listed are what I fill into my format. So I know I've got x in the front for both of them. I've got a minus 11 in the back for one and a positive 6 in the back for the other. Again, if we were to multiply this back out using your box multiplying or your foiling, you should get back the original. If you don't, you didn't factor it correctly. All right, example six. When I look at this one, 
I see immediately that all three numbers are even, which means I have a GCF of 2. This one doesn't have an X, so it's nothing more than the 2. So I take the 2 out in front, leaves me with X squared minus 2X, and then minus 48. Now notice how if I had missed the GCF, I wouldn't think it was this type of factoring because it wouldn't have been a plain x squared here now that I have to look at. Because remember, just because I found one way to factor doesn't mean I'm finished factoring. I have to keep going until I cannot factor what's left any further, which this one I can now because I'm going to look. It's an x squared. It's definitely not a special product because this third term is negative. So I am looking for what multiplies to negative 48 and adds to negative 2. So let's say negative 12, positive 4. Those multiply to negative 48. When I add them, though, I get negative 8. So I need things that are closer together. So 48 is not divisible by 10. It is divisible by 8. So negative 8 with positive 6 would be an option. Those do add to negative 2. So these are my winners right here, my winning factors. So don't forget to bring down this 2 that was the GCF. But that trinomial is now going to factor with my chart. So x in front a minus eight in one of them, a plus six in the other. And then this is my answer here. All right. Now, if it is not in the form x squared plus bx plus c, even after you've taken out GCFs, you've looked for special products, all of that good stuff, if there's still a number in front, then that means that we have to do a different type of factoring. So what we do, I'm going to show you two ways. This is called the guess and check method because you simply are going to make a list of the factors and you are going to guess those factors into this format that I have right here and see which one gives you the correct middle coefficient when you FOIL. So again, always go through the other steps first. Even though um, 42, 15, 17 is prime, there is no common factor here. I know that it's not a perfect square trinomial because 42 isn't a perfect square and because this term isn't positive. So that means I need to make a list of all the factor pairs of the leading coefficient and a list of factor pairs of the constant. So. Factor pairs mean what multiplies to give me 42. So it could be 1 and 42. could be 2 and 21. Um, 3 and 14. 42 is not divisible by 4. It's not divisible by 5. It is divisible by 6. 6 times 7. I know that I'm done because I got back around to the other side because the next number is in the other list. So I know that I'm finished with my factor pair list there. Now I need to list the factors of the constant. Make sure that you take the sign with it. So negative 15 is the constant. So it could be negative 1 times 15. It could be positive 1 times negative 15. It's not divisible by 2. It could be negative 3 times positive 5 or positive 3 times negative 5. It's not divisible by 4, and since I've wrapped back around, I know that that is it. So guessing and checking means I'm going to set up my parentheses, and I'm going to be using this format right here, a number and the x, and then the sign, and then numbers in the back. So I'm going to leave some space for the numbers in front. Now, this is not always true, but I would say most of the time, I would say at least 80% of the time, when you are dealing with lots of choices for factors, most of the time, the ones that win are the ones that are closer together. So I always try those first. So in this case, I'm going to try the 6 and the 7. Now, 
If you are writing in pen, do not write this yet because you can't erase it. So if you are doing your work in pen, you're either going to have lots of cross outs or you better have erasable pen. You really need to use pencil on this. So I'm going to try the six and the seven first in the front. Now I need to choose something to try for the back. And again, because most of the time, I'm going to choose the factors that are closer together. I'm going to start with one of the pairs of the threes and the fives. Now, let me give you a hint. I cannot put the three here. Because if I did, this parenthesis would have a GCF. If there wasn't a GCF to begin with, there can't be a GCF in one of the factors, which means that if it is the 3 and the 5, the 3 is going to have to go in the back of this one and the 5 over here. So let's say that I'm starting with this one that's on the bottom. So I'm starting with a minus 5 with the plus 3. This is my guess. You can't just guess and then never check. When you check, you have to do the O and the I of the foil. O for outside, I for inside. The outside gives me 18X. The inside gives me negative 35X. What I need to check and see is when I add those together, when I combine the like terms, does it give me the correct middle term, which in this case is negative 17X. If you do negative 35 plus 18 on your calculator, you will see that it is negative 17. So my trick of trying the closest factors together first actually worked on the first try in this case. So we could have had a lot more to guess. In this case, we didn't have to. We guessed, we checked, and it was right to begin with. All right, next one and last one for this video um, is example eight. So first things first, always look for a GCF. In this case, oh, I do have one. All three of these are divisible by three. So take the three out front. Six divided by three is two, so this becomes a two x squared. 33 divided by three is 11, so this becomes 11 x. 15 divided by three is five. Now, again, I hope you can see by this example why it's so important to follow the steps. Because if you don't, you have a lot more factors to list. Now, I know that this isn't a PST because 5 and 2 aren't perfect squares. I know it can't be this top type because it's not a plain x squared. So I know I'm going to have to do this. And if I left it a 6, I'd have multiple options. But two's prime, so my only choice is two and one. Five is also prime, which means my only choice there is five and one. So I'm not going to have a lot of guessing and checking to do here because I've only got limited options. I know that in my fronts of the x's, one of them has to be 2x and the other is 1x. Now we don't actually write the one because 1x one is just x. In the back, I have the 5 and the 1 to try. So I have to try them in both orders because regardless of whether I try the 5 or the 1 here, there isn't a GCF. So let's say I try the 5 with the 1 here. Again, that's the guess. Now I need to actually check it. So outsides are 2x. Insides are 5x. So that would give me 7x, which is not right. I want 11x. So that means I need to try again, but put the 5 and the 1 in the opposite order. Don't forget to bring that 3 down. I know the 2x and the x were right. I know the factors have to be 1 and 5, so since they didn't work in the first order, I try them in this order. Now, I should know that it works, but again, don't forget to check. Outsides are 10x. Insides are 1x, 10x, sorry, that's not a very good zero, 10x plus x is indeed 11x. So this does work. This is my final answer.